Hello there and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we are exploring the concept of first principle in differentiating terms. So how does first principle work? First things first, let's say we have that y is equal to x. Let's say we ask to find the derivative of this function, that the y over the x using first principle. What do we do? Your first task is this. To y add change in y equal to to x add change in x. So this is like your first tax when it comes to solving problems involving first principle. To y add change in y and then to x add change in x. Now this term can no longer be simplified further. So my next tax would be I'll move y from the left hand side over to this region here. So your next tax here. It's move y over to this space. And if I do that, what do I have? I would have change in y. It's equal to x plus change in x. Now, y here is positive. If I move it over, it becomes negative. So I have negative y. So here's your second step. Next step, you see, but if I look at my initial, um, question here we said y is equal to x from this point here so if y is equal to x we now say but y is equal to x if y is equal to x i'll replace y here i'll replace y here by that x and hence i'll be having change in y is equal to x plus change in x minus y but y is x so it becomes x so more like i'm replacing the y here by this x that's the concept okay so my next term from here would have change in y is equal to of course x minus x cancels out i'm left with change in x so i have this all right so at this point where these terms can no longer simplify the next thing you do is say divide divide both sides by change in x if i divide both sides by change in x i'll have change in y it's equal to change in x divide here by change in x divide here by change in x so from here i have that change in y all over change in x it's equal to of course, change in x divides change in x. I have 1 all over 1. It cancels out, which gives me ultimately 1, which is my answer. So this is correct. Of course, if y is equal to x, <coughs> of course, if y is equal to x, if we use um, the general method, we'll have that dy over dx is equal to, from our last class, we said the concept of general method is simply Multiply by the power. The power here is 1. So it becomes 1 times x to the power subtracts 1. 1 minus 1. Which is equal to 1 times x to the power. 1 minus 1 is 0. And that's equal to 1 times x to the power 0 is equal to what there? 1. Which is the zeroth law of indices. So far as zero, x is not equal to 0. This is equal to 1 times 1 is 1. So you can see we have the same answer if we use um, general method. So this proves that. Having 1 as my answer is correct. Alright, let's take a second example on first principle method. Okay, so let's look at the second example. Let's say we have that y is equal to x squared. Yes, and we have to differentiate this using first principle. What do we do? Now, first tax, we said to y, I will add change in y, and to x, I will add change in x. So I have y plus change in y, it's equal to, now, notice the way I add change in x to x. So this becomes, for x, it becomes x plus change in x, this all squared. Alright, so observe the way I do this. I did not say x squared plus change in x this would be wrong i did not say x squared plus change in x all squared this will also be wrong all right 
So notice the way I added the change in x to x, all right? All right. So the tax is simple. I'll just add change in x and then bring everything under the same par. All right, that's the task or that's the idea of adding change in x to this. All right, so from there, what do you have next? We All right, so from here, I'm having y plus change in y. It's equal to, if I expand this, what do I get? So I'll simply take this one aside and, and do the expansion. So I'm having x plus change in x. Let me square this. If I square this, now what this means is that when a term is being squared, it means that term is multiplying itself. So this multiplying itself, this. Okay. So how do, you, how do we simplify this? Very simple. I'll take the first term in the first bracket, which is x. I'll multiply everything in the second bracket, which is um, x plus change in x okay i'll take the second term in the first bracket which is plus change in x i'll multiply everything in the second bracket which is x plus change in x so the tax is simple use each of the terms which is one and two in the first bracket to multiply everything in the second bracket that's a simple tax there all right so simplifying further this is equal to x times x gives you x squared bring the plus down x times change in x gives you x change in x please notice x times change in x will not give you change in x squared this is wrong all right so x times change in x is x change in x take note of that also change in x times x gives you plus also x change in x so whenever change in x is multiplying x what you have is x change in x that's the concept plus if i now multiply change in x by change in x this is when i will now have change in x squared so you have to take note of this all right do we have a like term here this is equal to yes we have a like term which is x change in x x change in x so this gives you x squared plus x change in x plus x change in x of course they are the same term so we'll just simply add the coefficient coefficient here is one coefficient here is one one plus one gives you two x change in x plus then from here i have change in x squared all right so if i expand this what you what i will have is x squared plus 2x change in x plus change in x squared that's what i have all right so from there we can now have that this this expansion as i've showed you would be x squared plus 2x change in x plus change in x squared so i'll have this all right so proceeding further uh, let me take this off take this one off All right, so what's the next tax here? Uh, my next tax will be, of course, I'll move y over here, right? Move y over to this other side here. And if I do that, what do I have? If I do that, I'll be having change in y is equal to x squared plus 2x change in x plus change in x squared plus y moves over to the right hand side becomes minus y so i'm here okay what's the next concept i will now replace y y here was given as x squared so you can see so i would say but but y is equal to x squared so what do i have here so i would have change in y is equal to x squared plus 2x change in x plus change in x squared minus y what's y there y is x squared so i have this okay so moving on what do i have here observe that 
x squared here will cancel minus x squared. So I would have change in y is equal to, this gives you 2x change in x plus change in x squared. All right. So at this point here, what's next in there? My next tax here, if I look at both sides, I have change in x. So perhaps I'll factorize. So here I have change in x. Here I have change in x. So I would have that change in y is equal to, if I bring out change in x here, so here if I take out change in x here, I'm left with just 2x. So I have 2x plus, I have change in x squared, which means two of it. Okay. If I take one outside, I will have in one outside here, one inside. Okay. So I have this. So change in x to confirm that change in x times 2 times 2x gives you 2x change in x plus change in x times change in x gives you change in x squared. So it's just a simple factorization. All right. After this, what's my next step here? If you check our previous example, my next step is to divide. My next step is to divide by change in x. So divide both sides by change in x. So it becomes change in y all over change in x is equal to, this becomes change in x into 2x plus change in x. This all over, so divide this. Divide this by, um, excuse me. So divide this by change in x. All right, so what do I have here? From here, you can see that I have change in y all over change in x is equal to, observe that this cancels this, it becomes 2x plus change in x. In our previous example, we stopped here because there was no other change in x term. That's why we stopped here. But for this example, observe that we still have a change in x here. So what do we do? What we'll do next is to take the limit. It's called limit of change in x to be zero. So what this simply means is that if I see change in x on my right hand side of the equation, anywhere I see change in x on the right hand side of the equation, you take it as zero. In that case, you have that change in y all over change in x is equal to 2x plus change in x here becomes 0 and that's equal to 2x. So this becomes your answer. And of course, again, if you should use um, general method to confirm this. So we if you have that x is equal to from the question there x squared or y equal to x squared, we'll have that y is equal to multiply by the power 2 times x to the power, subtract 1 from the power, 2 minus 1. So we'll have that y is equal to 2x into 2 minus 1 gives you 1, and that's equal to 2x, x to the power 1 gives you x, my answer is 2x using general method, which is the same thing when we used first principle method all right so this is how we solve problems using first principle method it's 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 um way lengthier compared to the general method but it has its specific application all right so this is where we stop for this class don't forget to like comment and subscribe also share this video to your friends so that they can also learn thank you and see you in the next class